So this is the Opal C1 4K webcam. Now it's not the only 4K webcam out there today, but MKBHD, Casey Neistat, and Sarah Dietschy all invested in this particular webcam. Why is that? What makes this camera so special? Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what is up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick and this is why I ramble about tech and other stuff. Right, so there was a time that most of us weren't that invested in the quality of our webcams. In fact, what was considered the best webcam for the longest time, or at least the best selling webcam, was the Logitech C920. And while that was launched in 2012 and had barely been upgraded since its inception, the image quality was considered good enough and we were okay with that for the most part. That all changed when we started working from home during the pandemic. Rather than having the odd occasional quick online meeting every once in a while, we were suddenly forced to have all of our meetings online and people started caring much more about their online appearance and the quality of their calls. The problem was that most webcams were plastic garbage and even the built-in ones on high-end machines like Apple MacBooks, well, let's be honest, they kind of suck. So a handful of companies jumped on this need and started developing webcams with better specs, trying to meet this new demand by us, the consumer. But one of those webcams, the Opal C1, kind of stood out to me because I kept seeing it pop up. First, I heard MKBHD casually mentioning he had invested in this mysterious new webcam. And then uh, this is a webcam. This is called the Opal C1. Uh, disclaimer, I'm an investor in this company and I've been checking this out for a little while now, but I really believe in it and this is just a webcam that they've made for the amount of video calls that were on lately, I tend to get a lot of use out of that thing. And then I saw it randomly appearing in Casey Neistat's videos. I tried picking one up at the time, but despite its spiffy price tag and the fact that it only works for Mac, there was a huge waiting list. So when Opal reached out to me recently to send over some review units to collab on this video, I obviously immediately said yes because I wanted to know what all the fuss was about. And I'll give you a little spoiler, it did not disappoint. So let's have a look at this thing. I'll show you what's inside the box. I'll take you through its main features. And by the end of the video, let me know if this is a camera you'll be investing in too. So the first thing you notice when unwrapping this thing is how beautifully everything is packaged. I mean, call me a nerd, but I do love me a good unboxing experience. And believe it or not, this box actually won awards. Yeah, the box. The packaging is 100% recyclable and it has this ultra clean look, which I know most of you Mac users will appreciate. The camera and the box comes in two versions, black and white. Inside the box, you'll find the actual camera, obviously. When you take it out, you can immediately tell it is made from premium materials. It's precision machined aluminum. It has this kind of paint splattered finish, which looks quite interesting. These holes you see on the front are part of what Opal calls their mic mesh system, which is basically a whole bunch of noise canceling microphones. And these ridges on the back actually function as a heat sink. Next to it is the USB-C port, which is used to connect the webcam to your Mac. The C1 ships with this coiled cable, which I think looks really nice, and it adds to this industrial look they're going for. Then there's a camera mount and a key to attach the mount to the quarter 20 thread on the bottom of the webcam. All of it's made from the same solid aluminum, but with rubber in all of the right places, so you don't need to worry about damaging your computer display. The lens is protected by this magnetic cap, which is not only useful for transporting the camera to avoid scratching the lens, but it also gives you that little bit of extra peace of mind when the camera is sitting on your computer screen, but you're not using it. In terms of design, this is probably the best looking webcam I've ever used. Fun fact, the C1 was actually designed by Kenny Sweet, who's also behind the designs of the first Beats by Dre and the Pixel Watch. Now, obviously looks matter, especially when you're into clean desk setups, but this thing was not made to just sit there and be pretty. It's the technology used inside this webcam in combination with the software that makes this such an interesting piece of tech. I'm not gonna bore you with all the tech specs, but for my fellow camera nerds out there, I do wanna highlight the 4K Sony IMX582 sensor. That is a half inch sensor, which is large for a webcam. I don't think there's a webcam with a larger sensor than this. Combined with the f1.8 lens, that means lots and lots of light can come into this camera, which is one of the reasons the C1 spits out such an incredible image. I mean, it's super crispy 4K footage, and the bokeh is so smooth that you could easily mistake it for an actual mirrorless camera. You know, for a while, that's actually what I did in my personal setup. I had an actual mirrorless camera hooked up to my computer using a capture card, and I was using an XLR microphone to capture my audio because the internal audio on most cameras is absolutely appalling. 
As you can imagine though, that's a pretty bulky setup and it's not plug and play either. So to be able to plug in something this small and have that replace my entire setup, including the microphone, because the mic mesh system on the C1 is pretty incredible. So the hardware really is top notch. Now let's take a look at the software because that's where I believe the real magic happens. The app that comes with the C1 is pretty advanced. There are some settings that are still pending as coming soon, but Opal is still a startup company and they're currently fine tuning some of the features on this camera. So let me run you through some of my favorite settings, starting off of course with the setting that makes this camera resemble an expensive mirrorless camera and that is the bokeh. You know that blurry background effect we all love so much? Now, because this is partly software generated, we do get the option to adjust the level of background blur by simply moving this slider. Personally, I don't like to overdo it. About halfway is the sweet spot for me. Another fun one is the graphical overlay function, whereby you can type a name and a title, kind of like a lower third on a video. Depending on the situation, this can make you look super professional. Maybe don't use one like mine in this case. There's a slider to zoom in and out, which can come in handy if you don't want to share too much of your surroundings. And definitely one of my favorite ones is face lock, which does exactly what you think it does. It makes the camera lock onto your face, so when you do move around, it will follow you, kind of like center stage on the Mac. In terms of audio, things are pretty straightforward. There's a mute switch, a gain slider to adjust the volume, and soon there will also be noise cancellation, which I can't wait to try out. We have one-year-old twins in the house, as well as a dog, so if I can manage to drown some or all of that noise out of my calls, that will be amazing. There's a whole panel of manual settings if you like to take more control of your image, including brightness, contrast, and vibrance, and there are some effects like touch-up, you know, in case you had a particular rough night, and you can pixelate yourself, which is kind of fun too. You can record yourself, your screen, or both, which is great for webinars. And there's one function I just know a lot of you wished you had during the pandemic, and that is called loop. Just press and hold this big red button to start recording yourself, and as soon as you let go, it will start looping your recording. So you can do the dishes or whatever you wanna do while that annoying colleague that always talks too much is doing their thing again. And everybody in your call will just think you're listening very attentively. Just make sure they don't ask any questions while you're on the loop. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I, for one, am glad I finally got my hands on one of these. I look forward to using it some more and seeing the new features develop as well. If you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, there's a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.